Karen Houghton is Kris Jenner's sister. In 2016, Karen decided to get plastic surgery so she would look even more like her famous sibling. She doesn't look anything like Kris Jenner. Certain angles in my face were just not what I wanted. Okay, no one wants a double chin. In other words, she wanted to keep up with the Kardashians. Of course the Kardashians. I mean, everyone wants to look beautiful. Okay, so if you go like this with her and you just look at her eyes and maybe her nose up, I can kind of see Chris there. But as you can see, yes, her lower face doesn't look anything like Kris Jenner's face. Now, Kris Jenner has very famously had a facelift on the show Keeping Up With The Kardashians. When I had my face done, that was really a hard thing for me to go through. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't her first one. My guess is she's had two or three at least. So this is a type of operation that just might work for her sister to an extent. During the procedure, Karen was given local anesthesia. It takes five hours to perform the facelift. So it appears that she had more than just a facelift. A facelift basically lifts the lower face and the upper neck. And during that procedure, good plastic surgeons remove the excess fat from below the jawline. Now this will create permanent scars around the ears. Those scars will not go away. And when I perform the surgery, it does take about three and a half to four hours. Now I wonder whether she's had maybe something done in addition to the lifting of the lower face Let's see what her results look like. And will she look actually like Chris? Karen certainly looks a lot more like Chris. I look like my beautiful sister Chris and I never thought I would. Well, she does look fantastic. And I do think in addition to having the lower facelift done, she had her upper eyelids done and maybe a bit of fat placed into her cheeks as well. Sarah Schmidt really wanted to look like the first daughter. I want to look like Ivanka Trump. I think she's beautiful. Well, Ivanka Trump is beautiful, but she's beautiful as well. So do you really have to change yourself to her? I mean, she looks great as it is. Sarah pursued top to bottom cosmetic surgery to look like Ivanka. I love her nose and I love her cheeks. Now I actually did a plastic surgery analysis of Ivanka Trump and you can see it right up here. But suffice it to say, I do believe that Ivanka had her nose done probably when she was quite young. Now this person is gonna have her nose done to look like Ivanka's done nose. I definitely, definitely want this gone. I see none of this on here, She's nice and flat. I would also like the little swoop curve right back there. So Ivanka does have a beautiful figure. Now I do believe at one point she may have undergone breast augmentation surgery, although I don't know that she's had a tummy tuck or let's say a BBL. To achieve her look, Sarah needed a total of nine procedures. A nose job, cheek contouring, lip filler, lipo under her chin. So these are a lot of procedures, but the procedures, some of them are pretty minor. Lipoing under the chin takes maybe a half hour. Lip filler is something that's done all the time. When they say cheek contouring, that can mean a lot of different things from a buccal fat removal where you take fat out from the inside of the cheeks to injections of filler or fat into the cheekbone areas. Bra fat lipo, lipo on her tummy, hips and thighs, and a Brazilian butt lift. A Brazilian butt lift or a BBL is an operation where you liposuction fat from other parts of the body, like from her bra roll or from her tummy or her hips. You purify the fat and then inject it into the buttocks. This is a pretty common operation, but if it's done in the wrong hands, it has a very high mortality rate. Yes, you can die if you have a BBL in the wrong hand. So make sure if you're considering doing a BBL that your plastic surgeon is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery and is an expert at this operation. You don't want just anybody dabbling in your butt. Here's the big reveal. And the crowd approves. It's just beautiful, it's so gorgeous. It's just like a bone. Okay, I think she looks fantastic. I don't think she looks much like Ivanka, but she does look amazing. And I am surprised that she had a massive party to show off that she looks like Ivanka now. Is that kind of weird? A Houston mom wanted to look more like Ivanka's stepmother, Melania. Melania Trump is the most beautiful woman. Jeez, Melania too? I mean, Melania's beautiful woman, but Melania too? 
Claudia was to get an eye lift, fat grafts, rhinoplasty, breast implants, a tummy tuck, lipo, and a Brazilian butt lift. That is a lot of surgery at one time. Now, one big question when we're looking at these women who want to look like celebrities, is there something psychologically wrong with them? Well, I can't tell you just from watching these short clips, but definitely there are some people who have body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia, otherwise known as body dysmorphic disorder, is a psychiatric condition that occurs in about 1% of the population, maybe 10% of plastic surgery patients, and they basically see something different in the mirror that other people see. So whereas we may see a little bump on the nose, and that's what reality is, to them, that bump is massive. Now, people who have body dysmorphia often undergo a number of cosmetic operations in order to correct a perceived deformity that was never there in the first place, meaning that they undergo all these operations sometimes to correct something that never even existed. It's just that their vision of how they look like is skewed. So do any of these people on this video have body dysmorphia? It's hard to say. After nine hours of surgery and weeks of healing, Claudia was ready to show off her new look. I mean, she too looks great. I don't know that she looks like Melania, but she does look great. And that is a lot of surgery at one time. I usually recommend with my patients not to operate more than about five and a half hours because the risk of complications like blood clots really starts to go up. Stephanie Alcala is a registered nurse who wanted to resemble Kim Kardashian from behind. I swear that Kim Kardashian is almost single-handedly responsible for the BBL craze that has gone on for the last 10 or 15 years in our society. As I mentioned earlier, BBL is a Brazilian butt lift, and it's the most common way to take somebody who has a smaller butt and give them a bigger one. I want the production. Stephanie tried a host of exercises to achieve her goal, but she wanted more. So what can you do short of a BBL to make your butt project? Well, obviously you can do exercises. You can do things like squats and like what she's showing here. You can do non-invasive treatments. There are muscle stimulating devices out there that can stimulate the muscles of the buttocks to contract 20,000 times over a half hour session. And that can increase the thickness of your muscle by approximately 20% or so. You can also reduce the fat in the periphery of the butt. So if you reduce the fat in the lower back, hip area, maybe in the outer thighs, that can cause the buttocks to look a bit rounder, even though they technically aren't. It's a trick that some plastic surgeons like myself have used to try to create a better shape of the buttocks, but not necessarily have to try to make them bigger with fat grafting. So she decided to get butt lip surgery. To prep, she had to load up on fat. So some plastic surgeons recommend that patients gain a bunch of weight so that they have more fat to harvest to inject into their buttocks. Does this actually work? Well, if they end up keeping their weight at that same elevated level, then it may help. But the problem is, is if you're gaining weight temporarily, they pull that fat out and then you have it injected into the butt and then you lose weight afterwards, it's possible that, that fat in the buttock can also shrink down with the weight loss too. So I'm honestly not sure that doing that really is gonna help long term. Maybe short term it might. The plastic surgeon marks the areas on Stephanie where fat will be harvested. I want all this to go here. So how much fat can you inject into the butt at one time? Well, when I used to do BBL surgery, and I don't do it anymore, uh, once we saw that high mortality rate, I'd inject anywhere from 300 to maybe 500 cc's into each butt cheek. Three to 500 cc's, you know, to know how much that is, because here in the United States, we don't usually go by those types of numbers, but you're looking at, at a two liter of soda pop is 2,000 cc's. Half of that is 1,000 cc's or one liter, and I would do maybe a third to a half of that into each butt cheek. Now, in a patient like this, and somebody who's doing big BBLs, sometimes I'll literally put as much as a liter, one liter into each butt cheek, or a total of a two liter of soda pop into the butt overall itself. The procedure takes three hours. So it takes a long time because you gotta lipo the fat first, purify the fat, and then inject the fat into the butt. 
The injecting into the butt part of it is what actually takes the least amount of time. And only about 50% or even less of that fat is actually gonna stay. So let's say if you inject one liter into each butt cheek, about 500 cc's is what's gonna stick around afterwards. Oh my God, you look beautiful. The hips, the curves, the scoop. I feel amazing. Her butt does kind of look like Kim's. So earlier in this video, we saw somebody try to transform themselves into Ivanka Trump. But what plastic surgery did Ivanka have? Well, I share with you my beliefs in this video right up here. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate.